Hey kittens, it's PC Purrs and I'm back for another episode of A Dancer Reviews where a dancer is going to review a TV show, music video, series that has something to do with pole and we're going to talk about the pole elements, not just the story. So today we're doing Jocelyn's Cabaret, Las Vegas, I think this is episode 8, so let's do it! <laughs> Okay, so you already know we're starting the episode with her talking to Ballistic. They have to do a little recap. And then it's brought up how they only did a 24-hour promotion for this. And how they might have to stay a little bit longer. Wasn't I just saying last week, like, had Jocelyn thought this out, she would have realized that this could be a long-term thing for her. I don't know how this is just occurring to both of them. Like, what? 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 One thing I can say, though, is that this is the first time I noticed that they have a mirror on the ceiling and this is big round mirror and then they have this nice round bed and I'm like I see y'all that's real cute that's real cute so then Amber Chanel and Kay Capri are outside by the pool having a conversation and I don't even understand why Chanel and Amber are talking because has she been speaking to me like that uh there's nothing for us to discuss but Amber is giving her like a recap of what happened and telling her about the dress and Kay Capri is saying, well, somebody had to have stabbed it with something because we don't have scissors. And I'm like, mm -hmm. was it you, Miss Thing? We don't know because I don't really trust her anymore. But then they're talking about the whole money situation and Kay Capri is saying that the money should have been split up. But to me, it's a cabaret. It's not a strip club. They needed some clear rules on that. So... And so Lollipop is nearby, so Chanel's like, hey, Lolly, come over here. And Kay Capri feels some type of way. And I'm like, it's because you was just sitting here talking shit about the money division and about how she needed it. And I'm like, you're such a hypocrite, too, because weren't you just in trouble for talking behind the back of um, Black Diamond and Raven? And it was, oh, no, I didn't say this, I didn't say that. And now here you are again, gossiping, running your mouth. And I'm like, this is why people think that you're talking about them, because you are. But this is the first time that, at least the first time I noticed that Chanel isn't cabaret captain anymore because she says it's Lexi Blow. And I'm like, when did this switch up happen? I missed this? Did I miss this? So then Riri and Lexi Blow were talking and Lexi Blow is talking about how she needs a co-captain because she's the cabaret captain now. And so she could use a, a co-captain. And Riri is talking about how she saved her pasties so that she can remember her performance. And I agree with that because anytime I've ever worn pasties, I saved them so that I can remember them. So I get it. And, you know, I, I'm going to bring you guys an episode about how to make pasties because... They tend to come in one standard size and nipples don't come in all sizes, right? So I'm going to show you how to customize them based on your areola size because yours might be smaller, might be bigger, but I've got a hack for around that and just, you know, you can make them your own. So we'll, we'll do that a little bit later. They have that conversation and then Wet Wet comes and so Lexi Blow asks her if she had a hand in Amber's dress getting messed up and she's like, I didn't, but... Everybody knows they can throw it at me, so I wouldn't be surprised if somebody took advantage of this time to do it. But, so then Diamond, Raven, Riri, and Henny are playing golf because everybody does everything but dance on this show. I don't know why they're not dancing, but they're playing golf and Riri starts talking about this dress situation. So then Black Diamond and Raven start feeling some type of way because they feel like they're getting blamed for it. And Henny's like, well, you know, this is kind of just coming up. We're just asking questions. Like, I'm just asking a question where, you know, like, what happened? I'm asking everybody. But they felt some type of way. So then Henny is just like, you know what? I'm just going to go get Amber. So once she gets Amber, Amber comes in, you know, firing off at the mouth, teasing, raving about her boob job and saying it's botched. Because, you know, I mean, they sit up really cute. They're a nice size. But she has the scars that come up the boobs. I don't know. Is that the lollipop scar? I don't know. But... I guess when they did her implants, they did a, a line. I don't know why they would have done it like that. Maybe she has some type of complication. But it, it is kind of strange that they're done like that. And she said she paid $10,000 for those boobs. But anyway, so she's, they're going back and forth. And they're saying that <laughs> Amber's food gave everybody diarrhea. And then Amber kind of mentions to Lollipop, because Lollipop came in during the midst of this argument, that 
is she the one that brought up to them that aunt that Jocelyn might manage her? And I'm like, what is going on? Why would Jocelyn be managing you? For what? You don't dance. I thought this was about dance. Jocelyn gets mad when people aren't there for dance. So what is going on in this house? Everything but dancing. <sighs> so then Chanel and Lexi Blow have a conversation. And Lexi Blow is asking her what happened. She dropped the ball. She's supposed to be there with her. And Chanel starts crying saying that she really tried to give it a good shot. But just something doesn't feel right. And I'm like, you don't feel right because Jocelyn is picking on you. And why would it feel right? But then they bring up the whole locker room thing and the money again. And Lexi Blow said that she didn't even pick up the money. That somebody else was going around picking up the money. And they handed it to her. And she just put it in her bag. And she was going to split it up later. Was she going to do it? Was she not? I don't know. But that's what she claims. And then she says, you know, well, I think we should do your idea of having the girls do a routine. And then maybe that can get you back in Jocelyn's good graces. And so Chanel agrees. And she's like, you know, I just have to find what makes me stand out again. What made Jocelyn pick me in the first place. And the problem is... Chanel was always fine. It's just that Jocelyn could kind of get her to do whatever she wanted. She wasn't like argumentative. So that's why Jocelyn picked her. Not necessarily because she thought she did the best. Not to say Chanel isn't good, but it's just like she probably didn't pick her for the right reason. So her trying to appease to Jocelyn, like, it's, it's not going to happen. Just Jocelyn just doesn't like her like that. So then this next scene, I have to say I'm happy because... There's so much cheetah print just going around this room. Just, you know, you already know. It's on the bonnets. It's on the do-rags. It's on the body suits. It's, it's everywhere. The animal print is in the air in this scene. So, Amber and Lollipop start getting into it. And Amber is saying that she's up. I call them the twins. Black Diamond and Raven. Up their butt because she just wants some kitty cat from them. And I, I don't know, they're just arguing about who's broke, I guess. <laughs> and then they're just arguing really about nonsense, about Lollipop being a flip-flopper. And Kay Capri says, yeah, that's true. And then Amber starts pulling out all the cards that she has on, saying like, oh, I'm not broke, I have all these credit cards. <laughs> and <laughs> the cards she was pulling out were kind of like, mm -hmm. and then you can't really stunt with them cards. And Lollipop is like, that's like pulling out your all these cards, like... It's a discount card. Those aren't real credit cards. And I was like, I, I kind of have to agree with her. Like, she could have saved those and left them in her wallet. And all the girls are just in the room getting their nails done. But then Jocelyn comes and just kind of tells them they need to be quiet. And Jocelyn gets in Lollipop's face because apparently Lollipop didn't say good morning to her. And I'm like, I remember Jocelyn pulling this on marriage boot camp. She was mad at Bonnie for not saying hello to her in the morning. It's like, girl... Focus on something else in the morning. And I do think, I mean, they're on her show so they could they could say hi. But Lollipop said, I said a collective hi to everybody this morning. It's not that big of a deal to have such a fit about it. And so Jocelyn's telling her that she's entitled. And she's like, who do you think you are? You think you look better than Beyonce? You know, she basically is like, yeah. Now I want to say, oh, somebody else looks better than me. So they start clowning her about that. And then Jocelyn is mad at Black Diamond because at some point she said, oh, I don't have to be here. So then Amber is like to Jocelyn, well, I feel some type of way that she's using the N-word in front of me. And so Black Diamond says it again. She's like, well, if you say it again, I'm going to fight you. And she does. So then they get into a fight. After the fight, she still says it again. And Amber gets upset. She runs out the room crying. And the other girls are trying to comfort her. And it's not that I don't agree that she can't be triggered about the use of the word. It's just that when it happened several other times, she didn't say anything. So I'm like, is this just a moment for you? Or do you really feel triggered in this moment? Because why did it not come up any of the other times she said this word in front of you? And I don't agree with her saying it. I just feel like her timing of when she's getting upset about it is off to me. So when Jocelyn comes down, she basically tells them to just drop the whole thing with the N-word and that they need to have each other's back. And she tells them that their personal hygiene isn't up to par. And that they're going to have to dance and they're going to go one by one. So and she's only choosing one person. So she basically just glossed over the whole issue. And it's because she knows that the girl's been using that word in front of her too. And she never said anything. And I think she just didn't want to deal with the topics. So then we see the girls in the poll room. So, you know, I was excited because I'm like, oh, we're going to see some dancing. So she's like, who's going to go first? So Chanel's like, I'm going to go first. I like Chanel's routine. To me, Chanel was the most cabaret-esque performance because it felt a little bit like it 
because it had structure it felt like a routine it felt like something other girls could follow and do it was like it had enough like flowy elements and tricks elements where you could watch it you can see what's going on like it's mesmerizing it went to the beat but it didn't fight against the beat it's like you could hear like you can imagine that if the girls were doing this routine and Jocelyn is performing you'd look at it and go oh that's really nice but you'd still be able to like focus on Jocelyn like it wouldn't be compared it felt appropriate for a cabaret it gave stripper-esque elements without being full out strip club and I was like yes I approve I think this should this is why you guys chosen to be cabaret captain I'm here for it then Henny came and it was like nah so then <laughs> Diamond went next and she just showed her butthole and if you're gonna show your butthole I'm gonna leave you a link below like if you're a dancer because you should at least have some sparkly in there like a little sparkly butt plug and they come in different sizes so you can get a small one just put it in there and then you have a little sparkly rhinestone sticking out so that's really cute I'll leave you a link uh, below so look for that you're gonna be showing your butthole to people then what went went and you know she gave it a good try she had a little cute beginner spin on the pole she said she did what she could you know what what is like the fan favorite of the show now. She's my favorite of the show now. I love her energy. I love her spirit. Then after that was Raven. Raven was really cute. I liked her outfit. I liked her routine. I was like, this is cute. And then Kate Capri went. And I really like Kate Capri. She's very tall and she uses her height to her advantage because you're going to look at her. And she says she likes to dance strong so you hear her. So it's like you see her and you hear her. She has a lot of striking movements and a lot of very sexual movements. I was like, this is very cute. She did a lot of tricks. I was like, this is great for the cabaret. I was very surprised. So I was like, she's only going to pick one. She should have picked Chanel. She should have picked Raven. She should have picked uh, Kay Capri. Everybody else on the show could basically go home because they're not, you know, they're not really bringing it. So, oh, in my opinion, Amber can also go home. Who else? Uh, yeah. And then the rest of them should be like competing or just dancing in the cabaret. So after everybody danced, Jocelyn is like, oh man, you guys are making this hard for me. And she told the girls from, that were already selected to be in the first, um, in the opening night of the cabaret that they're going to help her to decide. So she leaves and tells them to think about it. When she comes back, she comes back with her makeup artist and she's mad at Chanel for talking about something. And she starts throwing, like, we see in the previews for next week that one, they chose uh, Raven to be their select for the next cabaret. And two, Jocelyn is super pissed at Chanel and she's throwing stuff at her. And Amber says something to her and she pushes Amber. To me, Jocelyn did way too much. She was really disrespectful to Chanel. I don't know why she has such an issue with Chanel. If she didn't like her, she shouldn't have picked her last season. She's just, it's too much. But um, at least we got to see some dancing this episode. That was great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what Raven did, since we know she's the one that got selected. And hopefully you will find this routine fun. You don't need a pole to do this. I'm going to do it with the pole, but this is something you can do without it because she didn't really do anything on the pole. But, um, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. In case you wanted this bodysuit, it's like a crop bodysuit or these polo shorts, I'm going to leave you a link below. So check that out. Hopefully that was entertaining for you. Let me know what you think. Um, do you think Raven should have won with that routine or do you think it should have been one of the other girls? Let me know other things that you want to see. Let me know if you're still watching the show, how you feel about Jocelyn, if you think maybe she's too mean or if you think it's all just like part of the show. And I'll see you next week for the next episode.